Today, we're talking to Ash from Watch Mojo. He has over 23 million subscribers. Let's see where this conversation takes us today. Yeah, it's the first time we're using uh, this paid version of Zoom. <laughs> so, <laughs> Making it rain. That's it. How's your morning? Morning's good. You know, it's, a, it's a simple life now. You know, you just take your kid to school, you come back, you're at home. I feel like very different reality. I have some news for you. Uh, I was joking with the office. I'm like, I have to start a new channel because I'm having a new kid. Literally. Are you? Yeah, the third one. Congrats. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm trying to negotiate a fourth one after, but I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, two is like three before. Three is like five. Having four kids is like having eight. You know, back in the <laughs> Well, thanks, Ash, for taking this meeting. I know we, we've spoken a few times before. We met before. We had some steaks together. Thank uh, you for that. It was delicious. It was right before VidCon, before uh, the last VidCon before the pandemic. So great steak. Yes. It tastes even, I remember it tasting even better and it was delicious anyway. Well, hopefully we'll have some steaks when COVID's all done, right? There are very few people um, that I kind of am comfortable to let pick up a tab. But since, you know, uh, you were gracious enough to invite me to dinner with your family and, and colleague, I figured it would be weird if I picked up. So I do owe you dinner to uh, sooner than later, hopefully, once we can be in public again. No worries, no worries. Well, as you know, uh, we're, we're somewhat in the same genre of uh, YouTube content. And uh, you've been gracious over the years to give me advice whenever I had some questions with regards to fair use. As an entrepreneur, I'm always looking at new opportunities and also diversifying my risk by opening new businesses such as a new YouTube channel. And uh, I spoke to you a little bit a while ago about an idea about talking about entrepreneurship, but not just talking about topics like Bitcoin or the market or YouTube. It'd be a little bit more finance with lifestyle incorporated in it. I just turned 40 this year and you know, like I'm going through like my assets and my liabilities and I realize like, you know, better or worse, I'm considered a millionaire. Being a millionaire basically means you're middle class, right? <laughs> it doesn't mean you're necessarily rich. So then it started getting my, you know, my mind starts turning and I'm like, well, how many people are in the same position as me, whether they're entrepreneurs or working for a company, they have like a certain financial target they want to hit. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, it is saying, oh, I want to be a millionaire. But I was thinking of like, like I said, starting a new channel. The tentative name is Middle Class Millionaire. I always admired how YouTubers that do vlogs, they're always able to collaborate and work together. And I get it that like your channel, Watch Mojo, and all the, the network of channels or my channel, there's not really a face that's anchoring the content, so to speak. But I, not that I'm aware of, but you never see faceless channels really collaborating and working together to grow as a unit. As I was doing research, I was looking at people like Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, Andre Jinx, they're all in the same sphere of talking about finance, but they all agree that there's enough room and enough traffic for everyone to prosper that they actually created a new channel, these four guys together. And they're like, we're not competing with each other. Why don't we just work together to grow as a unit? And I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. Look. I'm a big, you know, stakeholder mindset, servant leadership, here to serve. I'm always looking at helping others. And frankly, even if it means a competitor, like I think life is short and, you know, people leave your competitor organization and may go do something else. So you have to be a good human to people and you have to be open in spirit. I've learned that partnerships are hard. There's 24 hours in a day. We both have kids. So maybe if I've personally changed a bit, I've just become more realistic to go, look, I'm willing to not be um, near-term greedy. There's a famous Goldman Sachs line about being long-term greedy. So I have no problem saying, hey, right now, a given partnership may not necessarily be 
in our favor. But if it's roughly 50-50 over a continuum, so maybe it's 60-40 in one year, maybe it's 75-25 in another moment, but over the course of you know, a relationship, it's like with your spouse too, some days you might irritate her, some days she might be putting in more in the relationship through communication or compromise, but over a long continuum, it's got to make sense. It's got to be a fair, healthy compromise and, and kind of 50-50 over the long term. So I think you will see that even when your interests are good, people sometimes are more self-serving than you. Maybe some other people are more like trying to get a quick kind of quick payoff. And partnerships don't work like that. Partnerships take time. It's not a matter of if you have a disagreement, it's when there's a disagreement and misunderstanding and how you're willing to compromise. And that means acting in good faith. And I won't lie, I'm 42, I'm going to be 43 in a couple of weeks. I've been burned so many times by people acting in bad faith that I've become a bit more, I wouldn't say jaded, but I've become a bit more realistic. You know, people are always looking for me, me, me. I even have to tell sometimes my teammates when I go, hey, check out this link to this website, let me know what you think. They're very quick to come back and say, oh, I wonder what they could do for us. So here's what they could do for us. I'm like, you're going about this the wrong way. What can we do for them? How can we create value? And then maybe derive some of that value for us over time. And then both sides are happy, right? So there is this mindset in general that I've seen that, hey, just because I've always been, to me, it was natural to kind of want to give, but then maybe to, to create and then maybe walk away with some of that value. Um, I, I've learned that people are very near, near sighted. They're very self, self-centered self and that's human beings. Human beings, unfortunately, there's, there's that element. Final point I want to get to is just how entrepreneurship has changed, which I think ties back to what you said. When I started in business in 2000, I mean, everybody thought they would pursue like uh, traditional gigs, you know, a banker, consultant, or whatever. I started off, you know, as a more of an intrapreneur within other startups because I couldn't get jobs in traditional. Um, and I realized I love startups. And then by 2005, when I had the entrepreneurial bug, I started Watch Mojo. But there were no opportunities for entrepreneurs. Your lawyers and your bankers thought you were crazy. Um, there were no investors to speak of. The investors that were doing venture investments were very risk averse. Uh, people thought I was literally insane to be producing videos for the internet. They assumed I was doing adult content, which I was clearly not. Um, and when I look fast forward 15 years, I'm actually quite happy and proud that there's so much more options for entrepreneurs. I think a drawback of that is maybe they're not going to be as resilient. Maybe they're not going to have the same persistence. They're not going to be willing to put in the two, three, if not five or 10 years in, in a business that is required to build a truly valuable business. Where do you see the, the synergy between us, the, the fact, I mean, we live in Montreal, I'm sure that kind of helps somewhat with some logistical things, but like, what what are your thoughts? I think it starts off with just in general, you know, there's that expression, if you want to go fast, go alone, if you want to go far, go together. So I just believe that even as a company, not just Watch Mojo, the channel, but like Watch Mojo Inc., you know, we, because Watch Mojo is still very big, knock on wood, and is still very successful, we have an opportunity cost, right? Like we also, everybody suffers from innovator's dilemma. So when we want to do something new, doing it alone, we always are kind of pulled back to compare its success relative to Watch Mojo. And that's a self-defeating proposition. Because Watch Mojo was not just, frankly, let's say, a good idea and executed well. It benefited from tremendous timing and some luck. All successful stories benefit from timing and luck, right? So to to replicate things and kind of compare it to Watch Mojo is kind of like always going to be unfair. But I also think because there's that much more clutter and there's that much more noise and competition on YouTube, then yes, I think the odds of success grow like exponentially when you have multiple partners that kind of point to something. Now. Unfortunately, you can't have three, four, five, six partners because then alignment is really hard. But in theory, if you have a couple of parties, you can find a middle. Group. So that's just philosophically. Specifically, look, I studied finance. I probably was more interested in going into investment banking and say wealth management or let alone you know, mortgage or credit advice. But I like finance, but I don't think I want to be I'm that passionate to run a personal finance brand. I want to talk about my failures. I want to talk about how I came back from obstacles. I'm not going to be the guy saying, hey, if you're going to get a mortgage, you need to get an open rate variable for 25. Like that is not my forte. It's not my interest. So when you were describing it, I'm not an envious person. I said, hey, there might be an opening there, but I could see that being a yin to my way. 
Have you noticed the difference between the entrepreneurs that are self-taught, basically got out of high school, started a business versus the ones that received a university degree, re regardless if they got a degree in finance or in business or in accounting? School is important for the framework, for the discipline. Not ergo for like, oh, uh, I studied accounting, so therefore I'm an accountant. It's just a framework, it's a toolbox. What are you looking for in a potential partner? Sure. If you wanna do a channel and we wanna do channel, so any two parties wanna do a similar channel, in theory, you're basically fighting for the same viewer, spending twice the resources, and really just creating a lot of redundant efforts. So my philosophy is, if there is a complementary vision and target audience, you might wanna, and I don't have the answer now, we can probably discuss yeah. it offline, because it's more of a messy conversation of like, okay, but it's more like you list what are your strengths in general. If you were to show up and I said, put your best foot forward, what do you have? What's your SWOT, strength, weakness, opportunity, threat? Where are you deficient? It's possible that then in that Venn diagram, you're like, wow, we both are really good at this. So we can now do twice as much instead of doing the same effort and trying to fight for the viewer's attention. So that's now your investment is twice collectively and your return is half. So your ROI is a quarter. That makes no sense. But in this case, we're like, okay, if you lead on certain fronts, we lead on another front. And maybe there is a shortcoming. Maybe we realize, hey, this should be a host. And there's probably somebody who's been writing or hosting as a one person operation. And maybe that person is drowning because they're alone. So they got to do everything. Maybe that person then recruits and presto. Then you have like a lot more ingredients. Now we can make a nice dish because you've got the steak, the potatoes, the wine, the asparagus, the garlic butter, and... Well, I know you're busy, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. But thanks for chatting with me today. My and, pleasure. Uh, I, think, I think this is a conversation we need to have uh, later on, off camera. Sure. You know, <laughs> I'm not very hard. Thanks again. Help us reach that magical number of 23 million subscribers by clicking over here.